Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We're so glad that you joined us here at Royal Redeemer as you clicked online to come and, and worship with us for, for a period of time. This weekend, we are celebrating Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, that, that triumphal entry of Jesus heading into Jerusalem. Many were celebrating and praising him as the king riding on into the city. But he was riding in for a different purpose. He was riding in towards the cross of Good Friday. Let me share with you the, the passage from scripture that sets up this, this encounter, this story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 19, verse 35 and following, it says this. They brought a donkey to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hosanna, they were shouting. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This morning, we invite you to cry out along with the stones to sing God's praises because we know that Jesus is truly King, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He rides into Jerusalem, this triumphal entry, knowing that his, his destination is the cross. And we look forward beyond the cross to that empty tomb that we'll celebrate next weekend on Easter. Would you join with me in prayer? And then we'll dive into our time of worship. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where we can come and gather together. Lord, we shout Hosanna. Lord, save us. Just as the people back then in the days when you were riding into Jerusalem. Lord, may we not just wave palm branches, but may we shout your praises for we know that you are truly God. So Lord, bless our time of worship and of celebration. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to what you have for us today. May your Holy Spirit stir among us and open your scriptures that we may hear fresh and anew the story of your amazing grace for us. Lord, we ask this boldly and confidently in the name of Jesus, our King, and all God's people said, Amen. Would you join us as we sing? King of Kings. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt.
that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel. Well, for those of you who are watching online and may not know, we are actually continuing on in a series that we've been in throughout this season of Lent called Unveiled Grace. And this series is just an opportunity for us to peel back the veil, if you will, on the different expressions or facets of God's grace. And so we've looked at God's grace that cleanses us from our guilt. We've looked at God's grace that is undeserved because it is a gift that we receive through faith. Uh, we've looked at God's grace that frees us from feeling like we need to do something to make ourselves acceptable in his sight because he loves us already the way we are. We looked at a grace that sustains us, especially during those difficult and trying times of life. Like right now, with the whole coronavirus outbreak, we need God's grace to sustain us. And then we also looked at a grace that empowers us, that empowers us to extend grace and forgiveness to others, especially when we don't feel like we want to do that. And then last weekend, we looked at a grace that renews, that, that helps us grow and mature as God's people in our walk with Jesus Christ. Today, I want to peel back yet another veil. I want to unveil yet another aspect or expression of God's grace. And I want to look at God's grace that heals. You know, every one of us have hidden wounds or emotional scars that nobody else sees, but they're there and they hurt. And because of those wounds, uh, we need healing. Uh, a lot of those wounds, in many cases, come from rejection. Rejection from a parent or a peer, 
Uh, it could be a former spouse or uh, even a so-called friend. Some of us are still recalling words of rejection that we got from when we were in a classroom or on the playground as a small kid. The good news is that God offers us grace, a grace that heals. Listen to this verse from Psalm 147. God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God can heal your broken heart. He can, he can heal those, those emotional scars, changing not only how you see him, but also, and more importantly, how you see yourself. And that's, that's, that's huge because how you view yourself is going to define how you live and act. For example, if you see yourself as a failure, well, then, you know, you have this tendency to reinforce those feelings and you will likely fail. If you see yourself as uncreative, well, then you're not going to bother trying to create anything because somebody at some point said, you're no good at creating things and so you don't even try. If you see yourself as a victim, you tend to put yourself in situations where you are easily victimized. On and on it goes. You, the way you see yourself, the, be, the belief that you have about who you are impacts how you live and act. Now, obviously, some of those beliefs that you're still holding on to are just flat out wrong. But because somebody said something to you long ago, or maybe not even so long ago, but they said something to you and they had a position of authority in your life, you believed it and you accepted it as true. And it may have been years ago. You're still believing it as true, even though it's not. So my goal is just to help you get, be freed from that. My, my goal is to share with you God's grace that heals. That can heal you not only of those, those emotional scars from your past, but also the fears and uncertainties and the insecurity of today. Especially, again, with the pandemic going on. A lot of fear and uncertainty going on in our world today. So I want to look at how God sees you with the hope that no matter how anybody else might see you or whatever else you might be going through, you might feel confident in knowing you are God's child. So five ways that come right out of the Bible, five ways that God sees you, five things that you can trust because God always tells the truth. And the first thing that I want to share with you, the first truth that flows right out of God's grace that heals is that you are accepted. And everybody wants to be accepted, right? I mean, you want to be accepted. I want to be accepted. Everybody wants to be accepted. We want to be accepted by our parents. We want to be accepted by our peers. We want to be accepted by total strangers. We want to be accepted by our enemies and even those we envy. We want to be accepted. And, and that drive to be accepted is what influences us in how we live, right? The clothes that we wear, the kind of car we drive, the type of house we live in, the careers that we choose, all because we want to be accepted. In fact, some people will do some of the craziest things just to be accepted. Uh, maybe you can recall a time when you were dared to do something as a kid. Remember that? When you were dared to do something? If you did, my guess is that you did it because you wanted to fit in. I, I can think back to some of the things that I did as a kid. Things where were very dumb and very dangerous, but I did them. Things that involved my bike or things that involved a car garage roof or things that involved a sled on a winter day or bottle rockets. And I don't even want to talk about bottle rockets, but I did these things even though they were dumb and dangerous because I wanted to be accepted. Well, thankfully, the, the good news is that whole issue of being accepted has been settled once and for all for you and for me. Listen to this. In Romans 15, it says, accept one another then just as Christ accepted you. See, Jesus accepts you just the way you are. And his acceptance, this is the best part, is unconditional. Right? That verse that you just saw on the screen, it didn't say that Christ will accept you if you promise to be perfect, if you promise to you know, keep all 10 commandments, if you promise to go to church every weekend, or in our case, watch it every weekend. No, his acceptance of you is unconditional, based not on your performance, but on his unconditional love and grace. And honestly, I think some of you needed to hear that right now. Some of you watching me, you needed to hear that. Because you grew up with unpleasable parents or a parent. 
And if you did, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, there was nothing you could do. You could never do anything right. Everything you, try, everything you did, whether it was sports or with uh, academics and grades, whether it was some other part, you, you, never, you, you couldn't ever get the acceptance and the approval that you craved. I mean, even today, for some of you, uh, maybe your parents have been dead and gone for years, or, or maybe they're living in a different state, and you're still trying to earn their acceptance. In the, in the back of your mind, you can hear them saying, oh, you'll never amount to anything. And, and you're saying, oh, I'll prove them wrong. And what you're doing is you're reacting to them instead of responding to God. And that is a horrible way to live. So let me just say this as clearly as I can. Okay, you do not need their approval. Let me say that again. You do not need their approval. And here's why, because along with the approval that you receive from everybody else that's around you that loves you and cares for you, you have God's approval, right? You have God's acceptance. You have, you have God's unconditional love. In Psalm 27, verse 10, it says, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. And he will, because he accepts you just the way you are. And just knowing that brings healing. But there's a second truth I want to share with you that flows out of God's healing grace, and it's this. You are valuable. You know, when it comes to the value of any object, most of you know that that value is determined by two things. The first is who owns it, right? I mean, for example, if an object is owned by a celebrity, it is going to be worth more than if that same object were owned by you or me. I mean, think about it. Would a 1975 Lincoln Continental owned by Elvis Presley be worth more than a 1975 Lincoln Continental owned by you? Yeah, probably, right? Would a basketball with LeBron James's signature on it, would it be more valuable than a basketball with my signature on it? <laughs> Definitely, right? But you see what I'm saying? It, it, the value of an object is based on who owns it. In Psalm 100, it says this, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We belong to God. Through the waters of baptism, God the Holy Spirit has adopted us into his family, washed us clean of our sin, and has made us his. We have value because we belong to God. The second thing that determines value is what someone is willing to pay for it, right? And so you're sitting watching this in many cases from your home. Well, your home, the value of your home is based on what somebody else is willing to pay for it. So you may think in your mind that your home is worth $350,000, okay? Well, if somebody is only willing to pay $200,000 for your home, guess what it's worth? Yeah, it's only worth $200,000, sorry, but that's how it works. If I have a baseball card and I say, how much is this baseball card worth? It could be worth a buck. It could be worth a thousand bucks. It all depends on who's willing to pay for it and what they're willing to pay for it. And here's, what I, here's where I'm going with all of this. In 1 Peter 1, Peter says this, it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed or purchased from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. Right? The, grand, the greatest ransom ever paid was the price that Jesus paid for your sin. God exchanged his son for you. So you, you are worth the life of God's one and only son. If you want to know your value, you just look at the cross. Just look at the cross. All right, third truth that I want to share that flows right out of uh, God's healing grace is that you are loved. Uh, if you've had your heart broken, and you probably have, uh, when your heart is broken, when, you're, when you feel rejected, and it could be by a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or maybe it is a parent or a spouse, in that moment, you don't feel loved, right? You feel nobody cares. But listen to this, in Isaiah 54, God says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken. Okay, God's love for you is an unshakable love. 
And it's different than human love. Uh, First of all, God's love is consistent, which means that God doesn't change his mind from moment to moment and think, yeah, you know, today I'm going to love you. And then tomorrow, nah, get lost, go away. He's not like that. He is not fickle. He is not unpredictable. A woman I know told me a heartbreaking story. She said that when she was a little girl, she never knew whether she would be hugged or slugged. She said it always depended on the mood that my mom was in. It just crushed me to hear that. But I want you to know, your God is not like that. God's love for you is consistent. The second thing about God's love is that it is unconditional. I know we like to think that our love for our kids is unconditional. Our love for our spouse is unconditional. And and I get that. We try to offer unconditional love to other people. But here's the thing. We don't always succeed because we are not perfect. So we say things like, well, yeah, I'll love you if you love me back. Or, yeah, I'll love you as long as you do this for me. Well, that's conditional love, isn't it? God's love isn't like that. God's love is unconditional. God says, I love you, period. No conditions, no qualifiers, nothing. I just love you. And what that means is that you don't have to wake up tomorrow morning wondering, oh, I wonder if God's going to love me today. Is he going to love me next week? Did I pray enough? Did I do enough? Uh, you know, I know that he loved me because I did devotions today. Did he, is he going to love me the same way tomorrow if I forget to do those devotions tomorrow? No, 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 no. God's love is not based on what you do. It is based on the fact that he is a loving God. So because of God's grace that heals, you are accepted, you are valuable, and you are loved. But fourth, you are also forgiven. And I don't know about you, but I am so thankful that God forgives me because I need God's forgiveness. I need God's forgiveness a lot. (laughs) I need it a lot because I mess up a lot. I make a lot of mistakes, ridiculous amounts of mistakes, okay? Just so we're clear. I mess up all the time. And God's grace that heals reminds me that I am forgiven. Listen to this in Isaiah 43. God says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Isn't that amazing? In God's eyes, you are forgiven. Not based on the fact that you somehow deserve it, but because he's a forgiving God. Based on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, because of his death for you and for me and for all people on this planet, our sins are wiped away, our guilt is removed, and we have forgiveness because of God's grace that heals. In Ephesians chapter 1, It says this, God decided to make us holy in his eyes without a single fault. We who stand before him covered with his love. Wow, even before you were born, God knew every dumb mistake and every foolish decision that you would make. And yet, you know what he did? He still made you, right? And here you are. And yet, here's the thing, even though here you are, he still loves you and he still cares about you. And based on what Jesus Christ accomplished in your behalf, in mine, on the cross, we are covered with his love and we are forgiven. And we're forgiven not just of all the things that we've done wrong in the past, but even the things that you are going to do wrong later on today that you don't even know you're going to do right now, but you're going to do it. You're going to do it wrong later on today. And also the thing you're going to do wrong the next day and then the next week and next month and next year and on and on. All of your sins are paid for By Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And you're forgiven because God has a grace that heals. Fifth thing, fifth truth that I want to share with you, and it flows out of the fact that God's grace heals, is that you are secure. In Christ, you are secure. And that is huge right now, isn't it? I mean, we feel so insecure with the coronavirus pandemic going on. Every day there's something new. Dates are shifted and and new mandates are made. And and we don't even know what the next day is going to hold for us. It leaves us feeling very worried or afraid, uh, very uncertain, very insecure. And that's because security is based on something that cannot be taken away from you. So what does that mean? It means that you cannot base your security on the amount of money you have because that can be taken away from you, right? It means that you can't base your security on your health because that can be taken away from you. 
It means that you can't base your security on your relationships because those could be taken away from you. Your security is based on something that can never be taken away from you. And that's something, I just want to share this with you. It's God's love for you in Jesus Christ. So no matter how worried, no matter how anxious or afraid you might be feeling right now, you can be secure knowing that God understands exactly what you're going through. And God cares because God loves you. You can find security in God's love for you in Jesus Christ. And Paul talks about that beautifully in Romans 8. Listen to this. He says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What an amazing promise. No matter what you are facing, you can be secure in God's grace, God's grace that heals, in his love for you in Jesus Christ. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And here's how it works. Let me just kind of demonstrate this for you. You remember those, those uh, scales that you, you see, you know, those old-fashioned scales that tip like this? Okay, I want you to imagine on the one end of the scales are all the negative things that you've received over, the, you know, your lifetime, the things that people said to you, the, you know, the rejection that you felt, including the things today, the, the feeling of insecurity and worry uh, and uncertainty. All of those things are weighing you down, right? And, and they leave you out of balance. So how do you get things balanced? You add God's truth. You add God's truth to this side. You add God's truth, truth like the the passage from Romans 8 that I just shared with you, or the passage from uh, Psalm 50, verse 15, where God says, call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. Or in John 14, Jesus says this, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. See, you put the truths of God's promises and God's word on this side and it tips the scale in your favor. And as the scale is tipped toward the truths of God's word, guess what happens to the insecurity and the fears and the worries? They're lifted, aren't they? See how that works? And all because of God's grace that heals. I just want you to know as you are watching this that that we here at Royal Redeemer, we care about you. We really do. Uh, If you are looking for a church family, we would love for you to join us and become part of our family. Uh, If you're looking to know more about who Jesus is or how to be forgiven or go to heaven or baptism or whatever may be on your heart, give us a call. Connect with us online, all right? And we will try our very hardest to help meet your needs and answer your questions. I I can't guarantee we're gonna answer every question, meet every need, or solve every problem, but we will try so that together we can rejoice in this amazing God of ours who offers us grace, a grace that heals. So let me just close with a couple of action steps and uh, let me just challenge you this week in a couple of ways. First, I'd like to just challenge you to remember your value every time you look at a cross. Whether it's a, a cross that you see on a necklace or a cross that you see on a building, every time you see that cross, you go, oh, yep, that's how much I'm worth. That's my value. I am worth the life of God's one and only son. Doesn't matter what anybody else has said about me. I know that in God's eyes, I'm priceless. Okay, remember that. The second thing I'd like to challenge you to do is take some index cards, some three by five cards. Maybe you have a couple of these or maybe you can just make some on your own or whatever, but find five because on all of these, on each of these five cards, I'd like you to write the five different truths that I just shared with you, that you are accepted and valued and loved and forgiven and secure. Okay, so write those down. Then underneath those, then uh, just write down the Bible verse that supports that. And here's what I want you to do with these. So then you just, you have them by your bedstand or, you know, have them someplace where you can see them. And each day, just kind of go through them like you do flashcards and just remind yourself, oh yeah, this is what God says. Yeah, yeah, the God of the universe. That's what he says about me. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. This is what God says. And then the third thing I'd like to challenge you to do uh, is actually one of our four key practices. And that is to, to, to show love to others by letting them know how they can find security in God's love for them in Jesus Christ too. Okay, help them tip the scales 
in favor of the truth found in God's word, to lift their worries and their fears. Tell them so they can experience and enjoy God's peace, God's love, God's power, and together with us, God's grace that heals. All right, would you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus and for what he did for us on the cross. Thank you for speaking to us today and reminding us about your grace that heals. Thank you most of all that, you, that, that to you we are acceptable, that we are valuable enough to die for, that we are loved and forgiven and, and we can live secure within your power that can help us handle whatever may come our way, including the fear of a disease that is running rampant throughout our country right now. Father, thank you for this series and thank you for blessing us through it. We love you and we pray all this in the great name of your son, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All right, as we transition now into this portion of our worship where we present our offerings of love to the Lord, I just want to remind you that uh, we have a lot of, of work to do as a community-based uh, church. We, God has placed us here to meet the needs of the people in this community, and, and we are privileged to do that. Uh, but we are also dependent upon your generosity. So thank you in advance for giving as an act of love and worship to God who loves you first in Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving generously and in some cases sacrificially so that we can continue to meet the needs of this community, so that we can continue to reflect the love of Christ to those around us.
Well, would you pray with me, please? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the generosity of your people to support your work that you have called us to carry out here in this community. Thank you, Lord God, that we have this opportunity, this privilege to to respond in love to the love that you have for us in Jesus Christ. Bless these gifts, Lord God. Allow them to have a multiplied impact on your kingdom in this community, around the world, and in a way that will bring honor and glory to you. Lord God, I thank you in advance for each person who is giving generously and in some cases sacrificially so that your work can be carried out. We dedicate these gifts to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord God, we also want to bring before you those brothers and sisters who are in need of your healing power. Lord God, wrap your arms around them, remind them of your presence, fill them with the hope and of, of, of those people who are working to assist them in the area of, of um, the area of medicines and the doctors, the nurses, and the other care providers. Allow them, Lord God, to know through them you are at work. You are working in their life directly through them and also directly through your own power. But allow them, Lord God, to, to know your, your, your love at this time and, and meet their needs, Lord God, according to your good and gracious will. Lord, during this time, give us peace and not fear. Give us the ability to trust you in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, protect us and keep us safe. G- uh, give us the wisdom we need to make sound decisions and, and, and heal all of those who have been impacted by this, this horrible disease. Lord, we lift up the doctors and the nurses, the first responders, all the medical professionals who seek to heal and, and, and help those who are affected, who place themselves at risk for the well-being of others. May they know and experience your protection as they carry out their work. Lord, I pray that you would bless the leaders of this country as well as the leaders of the nations around the world that together we might act with compassion and mercy and love. May these leaders know your wisdom. May they trust your guidance and may they discover effective ways to eradicate this disease. Father, I also ask that you would please bless uh, those who are delivering packages, mail, uh, bless our truck drivers, bless the grocery workers, uh, all of those who are serving us so that we can continue to enjoy life somewhat in, in some, storm, uh, some form of normalcy. Please protect them and keep them in good health. Bless those who've lost their jobs or had their hours cut back or who have been furloughed from their position. Bless our economy and those who have smaller businesses or just any business in general. Bless them that may have those businesses that may have had to shut down. Bless us that we might recover quickly from this this time of closure. Lord God, we cling to you with confident hope and trust. At a time when life can seem scary and uncertain and anxious and insecure for us, Help us, Lord God, to lean into you and into your love, to place our faith in you and your power and your love for us in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord, as we bring all of these petitions to you in the name and for the sake of your son, Jesus, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, thank you, Pastor John, for sharing God's word with us once again today. That reminder of God's unveiled grace that he pours out on us so lavishly. Now we're going to invite you to stay online with us a while longer so that we can worship and celebrate and sing God's praises. I chose for us a psalm for us today, Psalm 98, as we head into this extended worship time. And the psalmist writes this, he says, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with with the harp. 
with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. Amen. Let us join with all creation and sing our praises to God.
stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? May God be with you as you go on your way and may he continue to hold you close, reminding you of his healing grace. Go in God's peace and serve him with joy.